Hi guys, just before you start the video, Tom and I have got something to share with you about the ice baths for you. Lumi ice baths. <laughs> <laughs> Get your ice baths, Lumi ice baths. Get your ice baths, <laughs> Lumi ice baths. <laughs> All right. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Hi guys, just before you start the video, Tom and I have got something to share with you about the Lumi ice baths. I can't wait to share with you that we have a link down below in the show notes that if you get 15% off your order using the code inside a mind pod on all ice bath and other accessories down from Lumi Therapy. Something Joe and I are super passionate about is ice baths as a whole. Yeah. And especially during the summer, chucking some ice in there and bettering your mental health is good for everyone. So use code inside a mind pod for 15% off your orders down below. Enjoy the episode. Woo! It's, it's a weird one with me because like the scales are never quite level. It's like I either get myself into a good like physical like like I guess routine, mm -hmm. then I'd notice like my mental health kind of like dips a little bit. That's interesting. Bit. You mentioned the toolkit just then and you said pre your mum, you didn't know what that toolkit was, you didn't know about it. All the things you put in that toolbox now, have you developed that over the course of the podcast? Or do you think there were things there beforehand that you might be tapping back into? If I'm being honest, the first the first tool, two tools that I had in my toolkit, I think, were my sense of humour and music. Okay. I think they've always been there. I've always been able to kind of find the funny in a situation mm. or kind of make, like, not a joke out of it, but, you know, like, light. lightheartedness light yeah, yeah. out of it. Um, but then, obviously, that can only take you so far. There's only so many... Adele albums that I can listen to before I'm like, <laughs> okay, you need to stop crying now on the train. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. You need to like, you know, there's, there's got to be other things here. Sure. Um, so then even when first someone first mentioned journaling, I was like, absolutely not. No. Like, dear diary, today this happened to me. Don't get me wrong, now I'm like, dear diary. <laughs> 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 I'm back. <laughs> yeah, but now I'm. Um, Third time but today. <laughs> it's, it's so powerful though. And now these things are becoming like, like my real kind of like go-tos. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not great when it comes to, it's, it's a weird one with me because like the scales are never quite level. It's like I either get myself into a good like physical, like, like I guess routine, mm -hmm. then I'd notice like my mental health kind of like dips a little That's bit. That's interesting. So I have, I've yet to learn like a, a balance of it all. Um, but I think that's from like spinning too many plates. Mm -hmm. um, I saw a study the other day and it said 72% of entrepreneurs struggle with a mental health issue with the highest one being anxiety. And I'm so anxious like all the time. Mm. You're stressing about so many things just from a business standpoint and trying to juggle so many plates, you know payments you said you have 12 people you know then you've also got to do cameras lights production post-production these are things which like people don't think about and then you've got to do your taxes and and just like loads what? of things i'm not doing that <laughs> no, thank you. The, the fact you're trying to like juggle so many things but you said before about being back on anxiety medication like, i'm not surprised but yeah. like i get it gets days for myself where i'm like i literally can't work i'm so stressed out i'm so wound up i just need to like go and lie down and not speak to anyone and i'm like i'm comfortable admitting that mm. like, i get those days I had that day last week i was like, i just cannot do this today yeah. i was so literally stressed my eyeballs everything you know what those days are just everything goes yes. wrong and you're like i can't see a way out of this today <laughs> I just need to go lie down. No one speaks to me. Put my phone away. And then you come back and you're like slightly overreacting, yeah. but it's becoming more frequent. And then you, like you said before about journaling, I just find for me, I'm, I don't journal. I've tried breath work with people like Jamie Clements, who was insane. Uh, I find like ice bathing or just sitting in something cold. I don't know why, just completely although it shocks my body and that's what it's meant to do it's all that's kind of my out and it helps me sort of reset a bit and then i go back i shower and i get going again but it's just it's so hard because i feel like it's different for everybody like we talk you go for gym quite a lot when you're feeling stressed or do anyway but yeah. ice bathing is great for me a lot of the time journaling is great mm -hmm. for you what advice would you give to people who might not know you know what that thing is to be honest i think it's why it's so important that podcasts like this exist because we i mean we can sit here and talk about the things that get us through those days but for a huge period of time like refuse to journal like i just said the thought of getting an ice bath absolutely not there's days with the gym like not happening yet when it comes to like swimming i every day like i could go and just like Dude. switch off and just non-negotiable like, yeah really um 
But then when I tried ice baths, I was like, oh, actually, this isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Mm. And it's the same with journaling. You've got to find your thing, like regardless of whether you're going to like it or you think you're going to like it or not. Sometimes it's the thing that you don't want to do is exactly the thing that you need to do. So you can have this judgment on like breath work or meditation and stuff like that. But just try it. If it doesn't work, you've learned something. Then try the next thing. Because what works for you, the, to be fair, it's one of the reasons why the podcast started. There was all these conversations at the time of like, you know, if you're struggling with your mental health, go for a walk, like meditate and this and that. And I was just like, well, I don't want to do either of yeah, those things. So I'm going to sit down now and talk to people who do their own thing mm. and maybe I can take something away from it. But I think the important bit is just to try. Like you may not like it, but you may absolutely love it. But the important bit is you try because I don't think there's anyone on this planet that could tell you it's the wrong thing to do if it gets you through that storm or mm. puts a smile in your face as long as you're not hurting anyone I agree. just try yeah. i saw a podcast i think it was david goggins who said it originally but it's been put into loads of different people's podcasts now and it's basically just saying waking up and doing something incredibly hard the first part of the day whether that's going to the gym going for a, a long run whatever it is everything else on that day just feels a lot easier after that mm -hmm. and i've heard that recently and i i kind of thought about it before but you know when someone says it gives you the reassurance like okay this actually makes sense i gym quite early now two three days a week at like 6 30 and i just get it done and i go really really hard and then i always find that day so much easier but the minute my routine cracks i'm quite big on routine and, it, and i like decide oh i just need a bit more of a line today like i'm not feeling good or you know i didn't sleep very well during the night i'm a wreck with like all my deci decisions throughout the rest of that day which I, I always find really interesting i know if i don't go now i'm screwed later on <laughs> in the day even though i might feel better because i had a bit more sleep it's just like a mental switch i don't know if it's just me but do you feel feel like that with stuff yeah about? there's two things with that i think when we talk about like self-care and you know going to the gym or you know these things that like really help us like for some people like it can be just as something as simple as like making your bed i found like when i was like really not in a good headspace i wouldn't make my bed and then it was just like, it would filter in, like, well, I'm not going to the gym. Like, I'm in a, such a horrible mood, like this, that, and the other. But then I started to break it down into, like, the simple things, like making my bed, drinking a litre of water before I left the house. Like, these little things, and then they started to build into the habits. They started to make me feel good. And then it gave me the tools then to, like, well, actually, I'm going to go to the gym. Actually, then I'm going to go and do this. I'm actually going to do my weekly shop in the morning rather than surrounded by screaming mm. people like after work in the evening it was all these things like recognizing what is working and like celebrating those like real small wins it doesn't always have to be like these real grand gestures um because some people it is just the simple things like making your bed um and i think the second part with that um i think it is a lot of anxiety comes down to routine like when things do go out the window or things change that's when i feel like things do get incredibly heightened and then it's always on those days as well like you catch your arm on the door mm. or something as well like it never happens at any time yeah. other than when you're having a bad day yeah, it's so <laughs> like it's so ridiculous it's so, it's so shouty at the door yeah it's like yeah it's honestly winds me up terrible um but yeah, That's I think so we true. are. Yeah. Why doesn't that happen? Why <laughs> don't well, I never happens catch on a good my day. shirt on a door yeah. on a good day? <laughs> Always on that bad day. <laughs> well, like yeah, I could say random about that. <laughs> no, 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 that's got to be annoyed now. We're talking, <laughs> well, something falls out of a cupboard and you're just yeah. like, oh, you know what? Stop your toe. Yeah. It's always on that day. Um, but I think we are creatures of habit. And I think post pandemic i think it has got worse because i think yeah, you know we had our freedom take freedom are taken away from us now we've got it back it's like now i need to fill every hour of the day with something mm. otherwise i'm like deemed as lazy or unproductive and like some of those days when if you didn't make it to the gym you your body is probably telling you that you need to rest mm. so yeah it's it's a tricky one because I really struggle with it myself, so I can't sit here and give advice yeah. because it'd make me a hypocrite. So if you've got any advice, <laughs> fire over this way. I don't way. think hustle culture has helped a lot with no. that. Because I see stuff online and it's like, I wake up at 3 a.m. Yeah. And then I go gym for three hours and then I made 100,000 pounds. I'm just like, 
It's like, what? It's like, Who with those kind of posts you guys, now? You guys are actually doing this or what? I trolling. I really don't condone trolling. But prove it. Yeah. Prove to me that's what you did. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. I'll believe you. Because I think quite a lot of that stuff is purely now just for social media True. and, you know, just looking for something that, and to be fair, and it's quite, I have a real difficult relationship with mental health content creators because very early on in the, like the, the days of the waffle shop and stuff like that, I connected with a lot of people and it kind of did what it needed to do. I was like mm-hmm. learning stuff. Whereas now those kind of people like are almost like following people or like calling people out. And I'm just like, they're on their own journey. Mm. Like, just let them be Mm. like, again, it comes down to that. Like what works for you isn't going to work for someone else. Like why are we like almost comparing mental health conditions for social media? Like that's not what it's about. It's true. Like you might be struggling worse than me, but at the same time, there's going to be days when I might struggle worse than you. But what's kind of important is that we recognize it, we talk about it, we work through it together, not like, you know, isolating comparing. people yeah, or comparing. I thought there's also a massive thing of like an us and them mentality. It's, it's my fight, therefore no one else can ever understand me. Therefore, it's, this, it's punishing and painting with the same mm-hmm. brush. Yeah. It's, it, honestly, it's, it baffles me because... We're all kind of like fighting this fight of like talk about it, you know, we're in this together. Then you kind of, you see these accounts and stuff that are just doing the complete opposite. Mm. Yet, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's tough. I got told off once because I said Wait, about... S- say anything on here. Yeah, I got told off for comparing my panic attack to stubbing my toe. And I like I had a lot of like I'm pretty sure the Apple review, the Apple podcast review is still there because I don't think you can take it off. Um, that yeah, because like I said that I had a panic attack once and I compared it to stopping my toe because there was like this instant like oh, like can't breathe, like this is I'm angry, like mm. what is going on? I didn't know what was happening. And then afterwards, once I breathed through it, I almost kind of like laughed. I was like, oh well, that was. I thought I was going to die, but I didn't, you know, that kind of thing. Mm. And then, yeah, I had a few messages to say, like, how dare you? You've clearly never experienced a panic attack. I was like, well, I'm drenched in my own sweat. <laughs> like, my mouth is incredibly dry. So, and my heart is racing. Like, I've just got off the treadmill. Yeah. So, w- how have I not just experienced a panic attack? Like, you just... People just love to hate That's also. my experience. Yeah. It's honestly, it baffles me. I feel like... ADHD stuff has been really destroyed on social oh, media. It's almost sexy. I, I, it's I, almost yeah. sexy to have ADHD now. Yeah. I did a post on social media about eight I months ago. You can say what you want. You can say what you want. People it's have, true. I did a post about ADHD just in my journey. I didn't. Even, I wasn't even following ADHD content. So mm. I did a post about my ADHD uh, just to help people who had like been replying to my stories and stuff. And I was like, these are four things I, I look out for. And the top comment was just like, shut up, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, cool. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, I won't um, be posting about this again. <laughs> I was just share like, your journey. Yeah. yeah and talk like, about it. It's important sh- to talk. I was trying to help some people. <laughs> Shut up, you idiot. <laughs> I was just like, right. okay, yeah, fair. But I feel like ADHD has been like, everyone seems to have it now. And it's just, it's so frustrating because when we brought Dr. Mark on, he like broke it down properly. Mm. Uh, and he was like, there's 500 symptoms of ADHD. He did the whole background on it. And he was like, it's so frustrating when I see people just be like, oh, I can't focus. Yeah, I'm, I must just have ADHD. Because yeah. it's more than that. It's it's impulsivity. You know, a lot of relationship problems come from that. It's like a lack of dopamine, lack of melatonin when you sleep. So you don't sleep as well. And it's just this never ending spiral. But people just see it as, oh, I'm it's hyper today. There, isn't it? It's exactly. And yeah. social same media has destroyed it a bit. You know, like if people did things a certain way, they would say like, oh, I'm so OCD. It was like, but are you diagnosed OCD or are you just saying that? Just like, yeah, self-diagnosis. And I think it's the same with ADHD. It's become a bit of, and I'm not pointing fingers here. Like I'm making it perfectly clear. I'm only speaking from personal experience because there's days when I'm not diagnosed ADHD, but like there's certain traits that I probably can relate to. I'm like, I probably should get tested. But at the same time, like, I'm nowhere near in a position that mm. I need like proper help for it. Mm. So I'm just going to kind of carry on. If it was at a point where it was like really, you know, stopping me or kind of like, I guess, restricting me to do certain things, mm. then yes. But I'm 
you've just got to carry on. By the same token, you could take a thousand neurotypical people and they could probably have traits of the same thing. Yeah. They could yeah, probably agree. have, they have 500 plus traits. You could, they probably have about 20 or 30 of their own. And yet no one would ever say to them they have ADHD. Yeah. So, yeah, there's... Well, we were speaking with Charlotte Fry the other day. She's like an ADHD coach. Mm. Uh, and she was saying the list for the NHS for ADHD, like medication or to be seen with ADHD is now like seven years. Wow. Just imagine I applied today. I would see someone when I was 30. It's like pretty nuts to think yeah. about. It's like that seven years of your life that you're struggling on just to see someone for it. There are parts of the UK that have 10-year waiting lists for mental health. It's crazy. Go to the GP. Yeah. I, don't, I don't feel like this is... Do people not speak about this stuff as much? Or like, I just like hear of it. But I think, do you think there's a risk now of we've gone through a phase of not talking enough about this kind of thing to now talking we're too talking much. too much Agreed. about it. Completely agree. And with this kind of like conversation, especially, there is a lot of noise. There is a lot of conversations happening, but there's not a lot of facts. Mm. So you see some of these like social media content creators. Again, I'm not taking shots at anyone. Um, you can. Name them. I'm not going <laughs> to name them before you carry on right now. But there's a few people that straight away come yeah. to like mind that they are not medically trained in any form of capacity giving out this like advice of like, this is what you should do if you're struggling with anxiety. So dangerous. Or I can fix your anxiety in these three easy steps. No, you can't. Nope. Like really. even top doctors can't fix you in three easy steps. Mm. Like it's not it's not really a thing that can be fixed. You can like work through it and you can, I guess, develop coping strategies and stuff like that, but you can't fix this type of mm. stuff. It's, yeah, I, it's so dangerous. It, it really is dangerous. And then you think about like these people that might not be struggling to a certain extent, seeing this type of contact. Almost getting talked into. Yeah, getting like, yeah, talked yeah. into. It's like, well, I must have anxiety. Yeah. I must have ADHD because that person on social media has named three things that I do. Exactly. Once in my life. So yeah. now I'm going to like jump. And I'm not, I don't know. I, I, need, I know exactly what you mean. I don't it's know if like, I'm being a bit too like. I'm not the slightest. No, throat, we talk about it all the time. Yeah. We talk about this quite a lot as well. It's like, I don't know how to put like a pinpoint on it where I want people to talk as as we talk and be open, but not to just self-diagnose with everything, mm -hmm. or almost believe everything you see on social media. I was just looking on my phone then. There's um there's this guy called Scott Kearney Investigates. It's a podcast. And he like murders Andrew Huberman on like investigations. Oh, and he just like talks about like his, um, not, not literally. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> True crime documentary. <laughs> <laughs> but he like goes on about Andrew Huberman and how like, I think Huberman's great. Mm -hmm. I believe, believe everything he says, but he says a lot of the facts he gives like aren't backed properly. Yeah. And it's just like, you, you believe so much of what you hear. And I'm not saying what Andrew Huberman says isn't true because I, I don't know. I'm just going off what this guy's allegedly. stuff I listen to, allegedly. Mm, mm. But it's just... They can't touch you. I just, I just <laughs> yeah, find it true. very interesting. Like, it's very easy to see a video and just believe it. Yeah. And I think that that is becoming slightly damaging. I don't know how you monitor that, though. It's, it's, I, I, don't I, think, I think it's a generational thing. Yeah. I really do. I think well, it'll be the next thing, like in a few months. I think there'll be something else. But you see it like now with like celebrity culture. Like if someone is seen like photographed with a different person to whoever their like partner is, all of a sudden Into there's broken. like this. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you saw it recently. Like, you know, I, I hate kind of speaking about this, especially because they're not here anymore but the whole jay slater thing mm. it's like people jumped on that and there was conspiracy theories there was like it, let the police do their job mm. yeah. whether you trust it or not like you, it sometimes does way more damage than it is doing good yeah. and i think it's it's the same when it comes to like the mental health side of things like i do think there is a lot of damage being done by social media tiktok because people are so impressionable like we we can't get off our phones mm. and if you are consuming this kind of content you only have to view one of those videos once or twice by accident before some form of algorithm is going to start firing you those videos so daily so then next thing you know your whole feed is being full of this type of content whether it's good whether it's bad like either way it's leaving some form of impression on you mm. the algorithm's scary yeah, you know, a, a lot of my algorithm is just like podcast content. Yeah. And then like I'll speak to someone and I'll be like, oh, do you see that clip of this person? They'll be like, no. Yeah. And I'll be like, 
oh, I just assumed everyone sees it. It's so like disgustingly tailored to you. It's like when, when I sit next to my mates who are playing cricket, theirs will be like cricket or theirs will be like all about different business bits or whatever. And I'm just like, I, in my head, I don't know why I always assumed me, Joe, yourself, Japan, we'd all just be watching the same thing. <laughs> but it's Probably just like, no, one, yeah, true, yeah, true. <laughs> but like no one's even heard of the stuff I'm watching. And yeah. I'm like, oh, wow. It's just, it's a whole, it's just scary. Yeah. I just find that whole social media world scary. And the fact of oversharing, it's mm -hmm. like, I feel like you have to share your knowledge, but not overshare too much. And this is why I love having guests on because there's only so much like as you feel when you're yeah. interviewing people there's only so much you can share like you can't just make stuff up yeah you you share your story you I share did. your thing well just say we can <laughs> i might start yeah we, can. Yeah. Might start. we were streaming in a hundred thousand <laughs> but you don't know do you you don't no. you could just make yeah, it just make i don't believe some of these people that are i mean i'm not calling them out like i don't in the nicest way possible, like I don't care enough to like know like what they're doing. As long as I kind of I'm safe, my family's safe, and like we're kind of like in our own little kind of like bubble. People can do whatever they want to do. Everyone's mm. on their own path. But mm. it, I think it all comes down to authenticity. Hey guys, Tom here. We hope you enjoyed part two. If you do enjoy these videos, please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps us massively. Here's a bit of what you can expect to see. In part three. Something must be feeling off in your gut if you're kind of regurgitating content that doesn't sit right with you. Yeah. Whether it's this kind of like hustle culture, but I don't think a lot of people are recognizing what's going on right in front of their face.